single ply bulky weight yarn is the bare yarn base of many indie dyers or just home dyers dream. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to try out dyeing a new to me yarn base. And this base is Knit Picks a la Prima yarn. Knit Picks a la Prima is a super bulky weight yarn that is single ply and there are 52 yards per 120 grams. This could be the perfect yarn base for making a super chunky hat. And the yarn is 100% merino wool. Many other super bulky yarn bases out there are either two ply or they have a little too much yardage. They aren't as thick as this. And this is almost like pencil roving thickness, but it does have some twist to it. I think this is relatively low twist. And if you look at this section right here, it almost looks like a twisted ribbon. You can see almost the like shape of that little bit of twist. And at times that hasn't been my favorite, mainly because it ends up not having the same like luscious feel after it's been dyed. So we'll see how this holds up using some of my favorite dyeing techniques. Before we start our dyeing project, I just want to mentioned two things. One, I am a Knit Picks affiliate, but I did buy this yarn with my own money. Uh, so any Knit Picks links I do have to this yarn base are affiliate links. At the time I'm filming this video, the yarn is on sale, but full price, it would be $10.99 for the 120 grams gain. And this actually is not that expensive. If you were to compare this to similar yarn bases that are 100 grams, that would be a $9.16 base price, which is in the realm of some of my standard yarn bases that I use and dye all the time. And I'll also add that I am very happy with the softness of it in the bare form. Knit Picks does have some dyed yarn in this base, but yeah, we'll see what my kind of techniques do for it today. Pre-orders for the 2023 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series are now available. Starting June 5th, we will have a special event with new yarn dyeing videos every night featuring mini skein sets and even sock blanks. You can pre-order yarn sets that come with 100 grams of yarn, 5 20 gram mini skeins, a lot of fun extras. They're all around a very special to me theme. And there's a lot of add-ons for full skeins and those sock blanks I mentioned. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop and you'll find links down in the video description. I don't think I've ever dyed a yarn base quite like this but we're gonna pre-soak it now. Right here I have just some plain tap water and we also are gonna see now how quickly this soaks up water. Now some yarn bases soak up water super super fast and others don't. And so that can tell you something about whether you might want to use it for a dry technique. Now I'm trying to be very, very gentle, but overall this is not soaking up water very quickly. Uh, I have a feeling, I'm gonna dump out a tiny bit of water. There we go. I have a feeling that non-superwash yarn tends, because it probably has more oil in it also, tends to soak up liquid a little bit slower than some of the superwash counterparts. And again, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something to keep in mind. And so you might want to do a longer pre-soak because you can see that the saturation that we have in here is not even currently. And so it all depends on what you want to get out of your fiber, but I think we're gonna pre-soak this for at least 30 minutes, maybe a couple of hours, um, until we can get the yarn nice and saturated. But I hope that I'm not agitating it too much. That's making me nervous. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna let it soak now. We're gonna use a very warm color palette today with Derma Acid Dyes using Ballerina Pink, Espresso Bean, Peach Blush, and Berry Crush. Now, two of our colors are very, very pigmented, and two of them are a lot less pigmented, so this is something we're gonna need to keep in mind as we're applying dye onto our fiber. We're gonna set up a dye bath in this catering steam pan with eight cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. We may end up needing to add more acid, but uh, this is a nice starting place at least. I removed a little water from the pre-soak, just so that way it wouldn't be really drippy as we brought it over. 
But now we're in our dye bath and I'm going to spread it out as much as I can. Now this is a non superwash yarn so I'm not expecting our dye colors to strike really fast. But there's also not a lot of surface area here because there's fairly low yardage. So we might be able to get nice coverage of our colors here. But they also might start striking because we did add acid. So we'll see how it goes. And I always like to point this out when I can, but our pre-soak is a little bit cloudy after soaking the yarn. But now I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we're gonna start dyeing this yarn. I don't have a yarn mop with me right now. Maybe I'll grab one for later though. But ultimately I am planning on tapping out these colors a bit. So I'm gonna start with some ballerina pink, kind of going a little bit randomly, not all the way through, but I am kind of treating these two skeins a little bit like mirror images right now. I think my randomness will increase after a while, but for now we've got a lot of similarities between them. Ballerina pink is a very bright, pink when you're just using the powder but as I said it is not very pigmented when compared with other pinks and especially uh, the berry crush that we're going to use that's going to be a lot more pigmented and it's okay if we end it with some speckles on the yarn I'm seeing some speckles in there they may or may not stay because this yarn is so low twist but now we're coming in with peach blush and again, we're doing a kind of random, mostly pattern to this. Now, peach blush is a color that strikes really quickly, uh, especially, I guess, on a superwash yarn. I don't know as much about how it behaves with non-superwash. What's funny is that it's not looking very bright to me right now, but it is ultimately a fairly bright peachy tone but maybe the ballerina is just a lot more neon feeling now we have acid in here right now but things are also cold and so that's giving me time to both like manipulate these colors through and ultimately it is going to slow down the rate that these colors absorb but i am curious okay we do have whites on the other side but we are getting some color going through. So I'll have to think about how we will eventually proceed because things are going to soften. Things aren't going to strike that quickly, but hmm, they could start striking a little bit. Why don't we add a little more acid to sort of help things along and I'm going to press this because you can see that these colors that we added already see how much they're spreading that's because they're not going to really strike right away they are going to spread because it's non-superwash if this were a superwash yarn and especially with this much acid <laughs> things would uh, behave a little differently okay we're, we're going to just go with this and when I'm coming in with the espresso bean, I'm adding just light, and not everywhere, just a little bit of this pigment right now. A little more over there. I'm trying to keep things a little bit similar, and so like I have dye on my fingertips. When I tap in for one, I'm using one finger, and then I'll use the other finger on the other skein. So Again, we're trying to treat things similarly. I can probably use a little bit more pigment than I used. <laughs> you can see I was being very, very careful, but I do want to bring in some contrast. So I'm gonna get some more dye. And we're gonna bring it in. I really, really enjoy hand painting on yarn using dry powders directly like this. 
I don't know, something about it just gives me a lot of fun. And again, you know, some of these colors are gonna spread and blend together a little bit. And that is okay. After we do the berry crush, we might come and decide to edit things a little bit or to help things spread out more or maybe spread out less. I haven't decided, but this palette is beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Someday, it would be really fun to speckle onto this kind of yarn and just see how they strike or <laughs> how they don't strike. So I'm doing little bits. I mean, we could leave it as speckles, but I know from experience that's not likely to just stay. See how bright this pink is? We're gonna help everything move through in a little bit, but it's just a beautiful, bright pink color. Ugh, I love this color palette and need to do more with it someday. Definitely. You could use a spoon to tap the colors in as well, but I'm finding that my fingers are doing a nice job. So, so far, and we definitely still have some white left. So far, I adore this, adore this. But I know, yeah, we have a lot of pigment in here and I don't know how much is going through to the other side. So, hmm, because if I move this, we can see more whites down there. Okay, but we did sort of push things through pretty well. I think what I'm going to do because I don't want to flip this. I'm going to come in and add more dye on our ballerina pink sections. Not because I want that to be more pigmented exactly, but I want there to be more pigment so I can try to help it through. So we have more coverage. Although honestly, I don't mind if it's more pigmented and I don't mind if we end up with some pastels in here. I think that this, what we have now is gorgeous and we could end up seeing even more spread. Now I will say that the espresso bean does have some blue speckles in it. So we may end up seeing some blues in our finished yarn and certainly I think once we heat it, I will flip the yarn and then we can definitely add more color if there's spots where we feel like I wanted more color. But for now, I'm doing the same thing with the peach blush and going bigger. I still have some in my fingers to just help this color both be a little bit punchier but also hopefully it'll push it through a few more layers. Now I'm doing this setup on my countertop and I am going to need to eventually take this over to the stove so we can apply heat so we can set the colors. But for now, it's really, really nice. I'm looking for like more speckle patches to know that I need to work it through. And when I press down in an area, I can see, oh, okay, there is a lot of pigment in there, but because we don't have very much liquid in here, things are gonna stay relatively where we've put them. But I think what I'm gonna do now is, well, first I'm gonna go, oh, it's so pretty. Um, I'm going to, First, I'm gonna go take off my mask briefly because all of the powder is now wet and I'm comfortable doing that. But I'm also now gonna bring over our metal spoon to show you. We've got our peach color. We've got, that's the espresso bean. We've got pinks there. We even have 
pinks over here. So there's a lot of color in various spots here. If I were to add more water before taking this over to the heat, what would happen is things would blend and spread a lot. Uh, we may end up with some of this variation if we added more water, but some of these more pigmented colors likely would spread a lot and so therefore overtake this gorgeousness that we have. I'm gonna need to remember this palette and use it again and do this on superwash yarn if the final yarn doesn't come out with all of this gorgeousness. So we're gonna let this just sit on the countertop for 15 minutes. Some of the color might start binding to our yarn, some might not, but then we will bring it to the stove and add a little bit more liquid and start heating things. But this is so pretty, so pretty. I am in love. I mean, the thick yarn against these colors, it's so beautiful. It's been 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, we're still seeing lots of dye. Lots of dye from all of our colors in here. So I don't really want to add a lot of water. <laughs> but we are going to go and start heating this. So I'm going to carefully move this over to the stove. We do have eight cups of water in here, which is good. I'm turning on the burners. We're a little bit high right now. I will be reducing that. But we do have a good amount of water. I've never scorched yarn and I don't want today to be the day that I do that. So even just a light press down shows that there's plenty of water. So what we're gonna do, since I don't have lids for these pans, I do have an Amazon affiliate link for these steam pans um, that I do have linked in the description, I think, of all of my videos. Um, but we're gonna add some tin foil on. <laughs> We're going to add tin foil, and that is going to help us in two ways. One, it's going to help trap any steam, and so if it cools off enough, it'll condense, so we're not going to lose water. But that also will help trap heat in, which is good. So I'm going to reduce the heat to medium-low, and I'm going to come back and check on it. If I hear a ton of movement or something, I'll try to reduce the heat further. I need to keep reminding myself, this is non-superwash, this is non-superwash, this is non-superwash. But let's just, let's check back in after 15 minutes, because we'll see if any of these colors are feeling a little lighter than they did when we first brought it over to the stove. It's been 15 minutes, so we're halfway through. Oh, let me turn on the light. And the main thing to note is how pale our espresso bean has become. Ooh. Okay, I'm still seeing pink. I mean, I'm curious. I wonder why that's so pale. I guess it's spread through. Um, okay, there's some pigment. Uh, there, the pinks, especially the, um, the berry crush has a lot more pigment left, but a lot of the color has bound, which is a great great feeling. I think one reason why there's still some color, especially down here, is just that it hasn't had as much heat. So I think one of the things I'm going to do is actually rotate this. There we go. Because I think since that end isn't as far over, it gets more heat. Um, and so maybe that will help. But yeah, there's still like pinks in there, but it's pretty. I wish some of that stayed a little more saturated, but I'm also not mad at it. The color value of things feels similar. It's just things still seem more saturated down there. Maybe as they're striking, they're also going more towards the interior of the strands. I don't know. Well, okay, we've got the foil on again. It's not perfect, but we're now going to heat for another 15 minutes. Okay been 30 minutes and let's see how we're doing. I still see some pinks there and there. How are we doing? There is a reasonable amount of pink in various spots, which is not hugely surprising. But at this point, 
I'm going to turn off the heat because most of the color has set very, very well. And so we're gonna leave it here with the heat off, but still hot and let the yarn cool completely in here. And as I started to say that, I am now hesitating because we don't know what the other side looks like. We don't know what the other side looks like. Ooh, oh, that's some pigment down there. All that pigment, ho oh, oh, ho oh. All that pigment just like sunk down. Should we flip it? I guess so. We'll also distribute those remaining pinks. Yeah, so we still have some dark, darker tones. There's some light tones in here, but the colors sunk towards the bottom. Interesting. <laughs> Not what I expected, but since most of the color has struck, that means we distributed the pinks a little bit more that maybe will strike all over and maybe will help make washing easier. We'll see. But anyway, I'm going to let this cool completely, 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 completely before we wash it because we don't want to felt anything. The colors are still gorgeous. Um, yeah, I just didn't know what to expect. Let's wash our yarn. And it's a little precarious. I'm like trying to gently squeeze out some of the water before transferring that. But the nice thing, okay, if I tilt it, there is a hint of some pink left in the dye bath. But most of the color is in our yarn, which is great. Rebecca, be gentle. This is like roving <laughs> because of how little twist there is. So, oh, I should move where the camera is. There's a little bit of pink in the water initially, which is not a surprise because that was in the dye bath. Sorry, I've now moved the camera. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit. So I'm taking the dish soap and I'm putting like a little drop of it on my hand to bring it into the water and hopefully that bleeding will not get worse. This color way is so pretty. I'm like dancing with excitement. Oh, that's great. I'm not seeing any more bleeding. I was gonna go straight to my spin dryer and then I remembered that I need to rinse out that little bit of soap. Please don't felt. Please don't felt. <laughs> I'm gonna fill this up with water. This is so pretty. I love the orange with the pinks and that espresso beam looks so gray. It gives it a beautiful contrast. All right, I'm gonna put this through my spin dryer hang it up to dry, and then we'll come look at the finished yarn, but it's real pretty. <laughs> Here is the finished bulky weight yarn, and it is awesome. I love that we got patches of color that yes, feel a little bit smooth, but this is still very variegated. Uh, we still feel the orange and the pink, and well, a little bit less <laughs> of that Oh goodness, what was the brown? Oh my gosh, I'm having a, just like my mind is completely blank. I'll put it on the screen. But that's a brown that whenever I use it feels more purple than brown. And here we're not feeling purple, we're feeling gray. Like it really shifted blue. And yes, there's some deeper elements that bring part of that, but Oh man, I'm really surprised that the colors behaved the way they did. There is some evidence of, I don't know what the official name of this is, but it's almost like ribboning. It's because of the way that the strand is twisted and there's so little twist that you can see sort of the shape of the twist here within the yarn. I did see this in the Indie Dyer yarn Fluffy that I dyed as part of that review. But that yarn has 90 yards per 100 grams versus our 52 yards per 120 grams that we have here. And so I feel like because it is less regular, it's not bothering me as much. The strands still feel fluffy, they don't feel dense. And so 
I don't think that this ribboning will translate or be visible in the final product. Which isn't me saying something bad about fluffy, it's just I was expecting it to behave a little bit more like this. I do need to be even more fair with the comparison because I dyed the yarn in completely different types of techniques. The fluffy, which was a super wash yarn, that might be part of the difference is that the yarn's a little bit less grippy. Um, that yarn, which was super wash, I dyed, kettle dyed, and this I dyed in a more variegated way, and so that may come into play. So we're comparing apples to oranges, except for the fact they're both single ply yarn, and the twist did give a little bit of the ribboning. I don't know. If you know the official term for that, let me know down below. Here is some of the Indie Dyer Fluffy next to my dyed Alla Prima, and they aren't really a good comparison. This one has Superwash Merino, and it's much, much thinner um, as a single ply yarn. So it's not a good comparison, except for the fact that this is one of the other bulky single ply yarns that I've dyed recently. And this one, maybe I would call bulky. This one is definitely super bulky. This yarn is bulkier than Malabrigo Rasta, which is a yarn base that is a beautiful single ply thick yarn that dyers always want for to create their own version. It is a stunning, stunning yarn. And so this isn't quite a dupe, but it is pretty similar. The yardage of this is also similar to Knit Picks Tough Puff, uh, which I have dyed in the past, but that isn't nearly as soft. That's just 100% wool. And this merino wool here in the Alla Prima is super, super soft. And I'm excited to order more of this for myself. And again, I am a Knit Picks affiliate, so I do earn commissions when you use my links, but I do purchase the yarn for the videos my, that I'm dyeing myself. Although once Knit Picks did send me something for free uh, when they had a subscription box many years ago. I did reach out and ask them to send me that for free, but otherwise, I spend a lot of money at nitpicks. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and what other types of techniques would you like to see me do on this yarn? As I said, I'm super excited to order more of it to play around with, and I think it is just absolutely extraordinary. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. I post at least twice a week and we have a lot of fun. I love exploring different techniques on different types of fiber, whether it has already been spun or is unspun, and whether we're dyeing with dyes that are uh, commercial acid dyes or even food based. And subscribing is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. Thank you so much for watching.